Making your car unique includes all kinds of customizations. We usually focus on performance and functionality mods, but this one is only for the scene points. The Club Sport Mark 8 GTI found almost everywhere in the world except for here is not only better performing, but it's also better looking. So if you want to improve the look of your Mark 8 GTI, you can take parts from the better looking car and put them on your car. The front bumper from the Mark 8 GTI from the factory has kind of this catfish grill situation going on. Where the Club Sport muffler has a lower Predator mouth thing going on, kind of like a Mark 8 Golf R bumper with honeycomb. Do we have to lose our front fog lights to install our Club Sport front bumper? Probably. Is it worth it knowing your car is going to be one of the most unique GTIs out there? God damn right it is. Before we get into our install, let's talk about a couple special tools we're gonna use for this job. This is a tool for punching a hole in the bumper. As you can see, this is the parking sensor for the car. Here is our new bumper cover. As you'll see, it is holeless. Now I know you're thinking, putting a hole in a brand new bumper that you imported from Europe and then paid somebody to paint seems terrifying. And you're right. That's why I paid to get this special tool. Because, I didn't want to drill a hole and try to make it the right size without the right tool because I don't want to have to buy another bumper and pay to paint it again. I am scared. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. In the United States of America, uh, we are required to have this orange reflector and everybody hates it, including me. So the beauty of this, as you see, we're reflectorless. All you need to do is buy a new bumper. <laughs> I'm calling the cops. Piece of cake. Call the police. That car is illegal. This is another wrinkle to this install. This is mounted to a bracket. Well, this is the bracket, but our new bumper doesn't come with a bracket. So we have to take this special glue and these brackets, glue them to there and then drill a hole. I'm not sure the order we're gonna go in on that. We might glue it at, we'll probably glue it after we drill the hole. We don't know, we're gonna find out later. And if you're looking for one of these bumpers or any other parts you might need for your VW Rowdy, check out shopdab.com. Or if you need install work, check out our shop. It's expanded recently, so it's bigger. We got more space for activities. To start with our DIY, we're gonna use our Torx and remove these screws. Now we're gonna pop our grill back, but we do have a radar sensor inside of our front emblem here, so we do wanna be careful with that. Now we're gonna slide it forward like that. Now we got our electronics. Oh, we also have, see so you have two, three, three connectors here. Two of them are LEDs. This one's for the radar stuff. If you're wondering if this grill is expensive, probably. <laughs> now we have these screws right underneath here. They're Torx as well. Going up. Right now, I don't want to take these wheels off, but for visibility for you, I'm going to do it because that's the kind of guy I am. That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> We're going to start by taking out our fender liner screws here. Then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Now we're going to take off all of our torque screws that run across the entire bumper. This is what holds the bumper on and the lip spoiler to the lower part of the car. Now I'm gonna take this belly pan off because it ties to the fender liners. Now that we've got that off, we should be able to pull away our fender liner here. Now this lower portion is attached to it and you can kind of pull the bumper away and kind of get it unhooked from the front spoiler area. Now like that. You can kind of push this backwards and release it that way. Now this will allow you to see inside of what's going on. There's really nothing attaching it except for a clip up here that you pop out. So you just pull it out like that. You can loosen their 10 millimeters here and that will allow it to loosen a little easier and you can do it that way if you're not comfortable pulling it that way. We're gonna disconnect as many connectors as we can get to from underneath the car and from the side of the car. This is our fog light on the driver's side. And we're gonna just push up on this tab at the back and wiggle it off like that. Now right here, is the passenger side. So I'm gonna point to it so you can see and then I'll block the camera. Now we're gonna get a shot of me unplugging this side sensor because Nathan said he can get a great shot from the bottom. 
but I'm not eight feet tall, so I'm gonna be stretching to see if I can make it. Just like that, piece of cake. This one is not as good of a shot, but you're gonna do that same way as the other one. And frankly, you should be doing this from the side, but for you guys, I'm doing this. <laughs> Yeah, this is how I would do it for real is you stand right next to it boop and then it's unplugged instead of all that struggling Yeah, see how that worked now this sensor we can also maybe get from the inside of the fender well Which we're gonna look right now. This wire is that connector right there Now this one so I just fished my arm underneath the spoiler. So eight total connectors But there we go and we already unplugged this fog light. So we just got to do this parking sensor the only thing I believe that could be holding us on would be like a clip on the harness that attaches to something on the bumper. That's a possibility, but all the connectors, as far as I recall, should be disconnected. We're free here on the side. We're just gonna pop this forward. That was my light. That was my light in there that we forgot. I'm gonna pop that guy out just like so. Now this bumper has been off before because I have not had it off, but Duncan did an intercooler on my car at the shop. This wire is still on there. That's uh, that was unfortunate. So everything I just said about all those connectors is wrong. You just have to unplug the fog lights and then this gray connector right here, this one right here, because that is the harness for the bumper. So once you unplug it like that, now it's completely disconnected from the car. So basically all those sensors, you don't need to unplug until you get it off the car. Now we're gonna take this stuff off this bumper. We're working on this stand. This is super fancy and schmancy. Uh, I've laid bumpers on the ground and worked on them in the past. And what will end up happening is as you're working on it, it will shift around like this. And all the dirt from the ground will just grind nice little scratches into your bumper. So just be aware that that's a reality. On this one, I think we should be able to use our hook tool to kind of pop this off. This one is going to pop out. Same to this one. Yeah. Since these are glued on, you're going to have to probably try to use maybe a razor knife and try to pry these off. So if you look, the clips that bite onto there, you just got to, they have these teeth that kind of chomp into the plastic. So you have to kind of, the reason why I kind of chewed it up on the way out, you have to kind of spread it and then pull it off. Uh, and it kind of peeled into my face when it happened like this. We have six parking sensors to remove from this bumper cover. We have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and the last one there. All the center ones are the same. The outer two are different, but the outer ones are the same as each other. The reason why that's relevant is because you need to know where they should go. Uh, so you don't need to focus on orientation or placement. You just have these tabs, you gotta kind of pop back and then wiggle your sensor out. Wiggle it, that's it, just like that. The inner sensors have the connectors facing in like this. The middle sensors have the connectors facing out like that. And of course these have them facing in towards the center. Uh, I don't have a good technique here. I'm just trying to make sure these kind of clips are free. And then I'm kind of pushing from the opposite side a little bit and do a little bit of wiggling. There we go, pop goes the weasel. This sensor, you can see much better clearly because there's nothing around it. And there's this tab here, tab there, and then you push it out. This one is painted. So if you pop it and have it fall all over the place, you could scratch the paint on it and then it will look like duty like this brown duty color right here, that, that kind of like that. Yeah, and there you go, painted. So if you need new parking sensors, you have to get them paint matched. That sounds fun. It's not, it's not. As you can see is the reflector and all it is, is glued in. So they're just double-sided adhesive in. So you can take like a, this, this guy like this and there's a little tab there, pry them on out just like that. Mm. That's it, I'm not gonna pry it all the way out. All right, and there is our harness, just like so. Now this is the fog light. It attaches into our bumper and I can assure you almost no chance this is gonna work, but because we wanna find answers, we're gonna see if we can make this work with that bumper. 
In case you're looking for what your fog lights look like when they're out of the car, they look like this. Ugh. Ugh. It looks like a hospital light. I don't even know why they wouldn't have made this black. They're like a helicopter. North Carolina, raise up. Take your bumper off, spin it around your head like a helicopter. North Carolina. Okay, now we're done with that nonsense. <laughs> we're gonna put the supports on the bumper first. Uh, so starting with these supports inside, then we're gonna flip it around, put the grill in. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to make sure that everything's fitting where it's supposed to. There we go, that's where it goes. I was just a little bit off with my placement. Okay, so I laid it in there and kind of snapperoo everything in place. This, this edge, you just focus on getting that there. Just focus on that part. The rest will kind of fall in place. Got it. Now we got our grill and we're gonna pop this guy in. And this seems like it has to go on before the front lip spoiler goes on because it goes over top of this section. Putting this together is actually pretty easy, but if you have to take this apart, these clips suck to get out. I just did a terrible job of properly seating this thing all the way. Clips all on the top, I kind of just laid in there and assumed they were in place and they weren't. So don't be dumb like me. Now this part isn't gonna look very good on camera because it's gonna look like not much to you, but this is really the only good way to do this because of how far this comes up is that the way we had it laying before would make it not very easy to sit in place. So the, the one on that side is in all the way or most is partially in but nothing else is. So as you can see, it looks too short. So what you really need to do is start at one end, get it all the way in and then work it all the way around. Ooh, you hear that? That was really an appealing sound. Side grills, uh, be quite honest with you, I have no clue which direction I should start this in. These tabs kind of hook down, straight down into this center grill here this tab was kind of pulling away. So I had to kind of use my fingers from the back and push it to get it into the channel. I'm a pretty much a body shop expert. As you're clipping in this part, you slide that in place like I just did there. And until those are in here, do not snap anything in all the way. Most likely if you buy this bumper, the only one we have in stock right now, and we're probably not gonna stock more. We're just gonna special order them if you need them. You're probably gonna pay the shop to do this for you because that's smart, but I'm not smart. I'm not a body shop. I'm just a body. <laughs> I'm, just a, I'm just a body. Ready for that audible noise? <sighs> what we discovered was there is an X right here. X marks the spot. That shows you exactly where you got to drill your hole for your sensor out here. And there's also a square for the bracket too. So you don't have to like play guesswork of like, where do we put our sensor? Cause I thought that's what we're gonna have to do, but good news. Because the orientation is important, you wanna make sure you put that the right direction. So this side where the, where the connector goes has to be facing this way cause you can't face it this way cause it'll be sticking out inside the fender well. I'm gonna start with this centering punch to try to make sure that we keep this, this uh, drill as centered as we possibly can. Okay. You get to watch me do the better side because I already did the other side to make sure I knew what I was doing uh, and I made a mess. So this, what you're about to see is my best attempt. Okay. Special kit for the sensor holes came with this bit. This is the size we need for that. Oh. Uh, I went in there <laughs> awfully quick. These sensors have this rubber guy on there that you can pull off and put back on. Initially, when I was testing the size, I did it with it off and then I looked and I realized this rubber guy is, has a purpose that's supposed to be in there. So what I did is found the size fits with that pretty snug in there. So you can see that's a pretty good fit. First, we have our size that says 18 millimeters. That's the size we need. And as you can see, that says 20 up top there. That goes in the hole we just drilled. So then we take our 18 millimeter on this side and we get that guy on there, like so. Put our nut on here, like so. And here we go. There 
There you go, so pop goes the weasel. Look at that. Wow. Now we very carefully grab this and twist it. Boom. Something I also did on the other side is, cause that's a little snug. So this is a Dremel piece that I just kind of rolled around the outside a little bit to remove uh, some of the material. Again, I'm not putting a Dremel on it cause I don't want to remove a lot. I'm just doing it by hand to kind of remove a little bit of excess material to make sure that goes in here smoothly. And this has to be glued to right here, just like this. Biggest challenge with this is it's bowed, as you can see like that. So you gotta hold it in place. And the correct uh, glue for this I purchased, but we don't have a special tool for it. So that's why I made a mess everywhere. So we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna make, hopefully I'll make a little bit less of a mess this time. This is a two part epoxy and it's super fast drying. So by the time I actually did like half of one of these, this thing had completely solidified and so I had to take it off to finish. Um, so that's part of the reason why I made a mess everywhere. So I put the sensor in here. Uh, I don't know if this is the right way you're supposed to do this, but I can tell you this. This stuff dries really fast and I'm concerned that if I, with being with the tools I have on hand, that if I don't, I could have one shot and I have to rip this thing back off because this thing sets in place improperly. So what I had to do, and I'm just gonna do it like this, is I'm gonna spooge out a bunch like that. And then I'm gonna mix it real quick like, like this, real fast. Then I'm gonna pick some up like this, boop. Oh yep, that's probably a lot. It's probably way too much. <laughs> <laughs> To be clear, you think I've made a mess probably based on the camera. This is way less of a mess than my last one. So I'm just making sure this sensor is in all the way. I'm trying to hold this entire thing in place. That's why I use glove kids. Otherwise this stuff would be on your hands forever. I've completed my work. I've taken a harness. I attached new uh, sticky guys. These, are, these I just happen to have. Uh, from other other projects I was doing. I zip tied them all in place nicely. All this stuff, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't worry about that. Uh, and yeah, uh, we're ready to go back in. So this duct right here on Club Sport Mark 8 cars, this goes to an additional radiator. Uh, that's why this is vented open. On old Club Sport cars, this used to be a duct that would go to the brake system. Uh, that's no longer a thing, but they do have better brakes, which we'll be doing at a later date. We tried to install that bumper, didn't work. Uh, it was close, but it was pushing. And I, we believe the reason why these are the bumper foams. This is our club sport one. So it could be this channel here that's hitting. Uh, we're gonna try to, since we have it, uh, we're either gonna have it sit around and do nothing, or I'm gonna modify this to try to make it work. So we're gonna cut this thing uh, because if you look, U.S. cars have these cap things here. This one goes in between it, and this one doesn't work like that. So we're gonna see if maybe this works, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Remember, remember how I was doing the Bob Vila thing with the suspension? We're doing more woodworking tools with our Irwin saw, hashtag not sponsored. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Test two, worked great, uh, made a mess, but our bumper is on, so we're gonna reinstall it. Now, those nuts uh, that are 10 mils, you can snap them in, you also can use them to loosen and tighten to adjust this gapping. Some people go crazy over this stuff over panel gapping. There we go. Wow, I, I like it a lot. That is super cool. Let's, let's reinstall this bumper, huh? Uh -oh. What is, oh, this? Yeah, oh, geez. That? Well, you see what happened was, the guy who ordered this bumper uh, didn't know that there was a tow hook after the tow hook for the, for the trim on the grill 
as opposed to just the painted part on the bumper. I never ordered this part, so that's pretty neat. We'll just put some duct tape over top of it. Don't worry about it. We may, we may legitimately get a tow hook just so that it looks like at least something instead of just this bleh situation. So we're done. So this is a fog light that came out of, the, out of the car. As you see, it has the five kind of honeycombs. This is the honeycombs that exist in the Club Sport bumper. So as you can see, this, one of these things is not like the other. You can't have fog lights. Now I'm gonna have so much fog in my life. So you're probably wondering if you throw faults if you remove the fog lights from the car. When you start the car without doing anything with the lights, there are no faults on the cluster. But if I do the front fog lights, I do expect to get faults like that. So I attempted to code it out. It didn't work. I was unsuccessful. I might have to play with it more. It is possible to code out, but it doesn't give you faults unless you turn the fog lights on, which I don't know why you turn fog lights on in a car that doesn't any longer have fog lights. Uh, so you won't get faults unless you do that. <laughs> 